We are rolling into Christmas. Exciting time of the year for me. I love the silver bells, silver bells, cor chorus of the bells, chorus of the bells, dun, 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 whatever that one is. That song gets me going. I don't care if it is one of those dumb diamond ring commercials or whatever it is. That song gets me going. It doesn't, it, it can be the violins and all that stuff, or it can be Metallica. Doesn't matter. Trans Siberian Orchestra. Dun, 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 dun. All right, Bob Glasson. Here's some things I hope you cover in future videos. Video of you working a quirky. How to choose which quirky colors to use. Do you upgrade the hooks? Do you put Procure on your lures? Leader length and pound test. All right, so right here, I guess I'm gonna do it. Right here, this is the video where I am showing you how to work a quirky. It's one of the first, the first videos I did. Um, go check that one out. I will put it at the end of the video. It'll be one of those little pops up. Click on it. If you wanna see it, you can see it. Uh, do I upgrade the hooks? No, I do not. Um, I don't. Well, the, the hooks that come with it are good. I like the hooks to be a little bit soft, so when I hang them on shell or something, I can I can pull them off and get that you know nine to twenty dollar corky back. So I, I don't upgrade them. When they get rusty, I replace them with. Write this down. Everyday question. I replace them with a number four VMC round bend treble. That is the same hook that comes on them, or the, it's the same style, same everything. I think it's even the same hook. I'm I back whenever whenever Paul was making them. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Either way, number four, round bin VMC treble. VMC is the brand. Uh, which quirky colors to use? If it's dark and dreary outside, I'm gonna use a darker quirky. If it's bright, I'm gonna use a brighter one. If it's real clean, clear water, I'm probably gonna use something more natural looking. Uh, if it's dirty water, I'm gonna use something with a vertical line on it. Uh, the one that's kind of an exception to the rule lately has been the hothead. It's been working in clean or dirty water. But that vertical line, that color, and then the line, and then another color is very contrasting, and it seems to do pretty well whenever the water is, is off color. Do you put Procure on your lures? That's a secret, sir. Leader length and pound test. Uh, me, myself, I'm going to run about a three-foot leader when I'm using one. 20-pound minimum. Um, I don't want to mention any names. But a guy named Josh may have lost one of the biggest trout he's ever hooked up to with me the other day. Uh, but we were fishing over heavy show. I think his, his leader might have been nicked up. It also might have been because I told everybody, don't look, it's bad luck. And his, his best friend James said, I'm watching you. And it was, he said, I'm watching you, pow. Don't watch people when they're fighting a the fish. It's bad luck. About a three foot. I personally, myself, I use big game because I can buy big spools of it. I use uh, big, big game, uh, mono, 20 pound, 25 if I can get it. I, I have other stuff. I have Seaguar. I have different things. And, but really, I, I, I use those different ones because they're easier for me to carry around in certain pockets. But a, a roll of, for eight bucks, I think, uh, the 20 pound mono will do it. And we'll go back. Do I put Procure on my lure? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. Uh, my buddy Nathan used to do it all the time, and I made fun of him. I mean, I thought he was the biggest nerd on the planet for smearing this stuff on there. But when the bite got slow, I noticed he caught fish, and I didn't tell him one day I had some in my pocket, and the bite got slow, and I put some Procure on it, and I caught a couple, and I, I, I did that long enough that maybe it's coincidence, maybe it wasn't, but it seemed to turn the bite on. Fun fact, whenever you put Procure on your corky and you throw it out, it'll make little slicks. Do not tell your friends you're using it because they're gonna see those slicks and they're gonna cast out them like crazy. <coughs> Travis Thompson. All right, the Daniels Man TV. Why does the wire keep coming out of the nose of my quirky? It just happens. That just means you're catching fish on it. It's gonna happen. Redfish usually do it faster. No way around it, man. It, when Paul was making them now, it, it happens. You just deal with it. It's gonna cost you another nine bucks. I've been killing the trout on them. They are too expensive to keep having the wire mess up. Fill you on that one. Mirror Lure, if you're watching, CCTV, we, huh, I would love, I would love to have a, your backing, please. Thanks for the videos. They have been, they have really been key in learning how to work the bait. I've seen my results start improving dramatically since I started watching your videos. Daniel, thank you so much. Um, watching my videos is, you know, it, it, it can be helpful, but you're the guy out there implementing, doing the hard work. So congrats, kudos to you, sir. All right, rad reeling fishing. Can you say Photoshop? 
haha. <coughs> Photoshop. Haha. -ha. Was I supposed to say the haha -ha or just Photoshop? Photoshop. Nailed it. Justin Lane. Does catching big girls at the bar count too? Asking for a friend. Congrats on the baby girl, Delaney and Sean. Justin, catching big girls on the sandbar counts. Huh, over the top. Just came right back around on your joke there. Sandbar, get it? Chris Kaysen, Kasson, Kasson. When wade fishing, how quickly do you walk or move to not spook the fish? My rule is this. If, I, if I'm walking and I'm trying to be quiet, if I can hear the little waves sloshing around my legs or my waist or whatever it is, I'm moving too fast. If the wind's blowing against me and really those waves are hitting me, I'm, I'll, I'll kind of even like, like corner them a little bit to try to let that water break around me a little different. Um, but if I can hear it, then I feel like the fish can definitely hear it. Another thing that I do, kind of outside your question, but if I can walk around a shell pad or anything crunchy, if I can walk around it instead of over it, I'm gonna do it. If I have to walk through it, I'm gonna do it as soft-footed and quietly as possible. I don't want a bunch of crunching and crashing going on around there. All right, longer one. Bruce May, good stuff, Cap. New to the quirky, I'm fishing the grass flats and oyster bars in Appalachian Bay near St. Mark's, Florida with a seven foot, three inch, medium action, fast tip, St. Croix bait caster. One to four feet of water. Couple of questions. Can my rod tolerate the weight of the fat boy or should I drop the lighter to the lighter Paul Brown original? Should I use the standard corky or the floater? Thank you. The, the weight of the corky, I think it weighs five eighths. I, I think that's the weight on it. I will throw that thing with a light action rod. Um, you know, if, it, if you can feel it really loading up your rod, just maybe when you cast, just be a little bit more, you know, easy with it. But it, that little tag on the, on the bottom of your rod that says, you know, you know, three, three eighths to one ounce or whatever the little tag says, I never pay attention to that. Maybe, maybe that's a, a freshwater guy thing. I have never paid attention to it once. That, that lure isn't really going to tear up your rod. Um, in fact, some of the softer action rods, you know, are a bit more effective in working that corky in cooler, slower presentations. So no, I wouldn't worry a bit about that. It's a, a medium action fast tip, that should be more than enough. I'm not really familiar with a lot of the St. Croix rods. I, I've, I've held a couple, but that should be more than enough. I wouldn't worry about that. Um, should I use the standard corky or the floater? My typical rule is this, if the water's really shallow and I really want that lure to just hover and hang without me having to work it, or if there's grass or shell on the bottom that I, that I need to stay off of, that's when I throw the floater. Uh, the rest of the time, I'm throwing a fat boy. If you pulled out 10 of my lures right now, eight of them are fat boys, two of them are floaters. I, I don't use floaters a whole lot. Uh, Captain Pat does, I, I don't. Tony Carroll. These are getting better and better. Keep them coming, Captain Caleb. Always great tips we can learn from. I caught a PB trout the other day based on your tips. Tony, congrats, man. I, man, I see you commenting on all these videos. I, I really appreciate it. The support's great. Um, again, congrats on the fish, but you're the one that took something that I said, implemented it into your own, and went and did it. Couldn't be happier. Y'all send me pictures of these fish. I, I've gotten... I've, I've gotten several from people and you know, I'm, I'm posting them periodically. I'll give you the shout out and all that stuff. Jason Brinson, Fat Boy Pro versus regular Fat Boy. Would you bend the Pro Series the same as the regular version? What are the main differences? I like the Pro version, it's pretty cool. Um, the differences that I really see between the regular, you know, eight to nine dollar one and the, I think the, the Pro's 10 or 12 bucks is it had the pro has the foil insert in it so a lot of the baits that have the the more you know translucent sides when the sun's hitting that foil it kind of lights them up and makes them look good um i think i think i think i remember noticing this whenever they first came out they seem to have a little bit more weight in the nose so that they they, they float they sink a little bit more level do i feel like i need to get rid of my old ones no do i feel like the the pros are going to be the difference between catching fish and not catching fish? No, not really. But whenever whenever that water's kind of cleaner and that sun's out and I want a little bit of flash on it, uh, I went to, I, I'll go to the Pro just because I want that flash. If you're using a reg, a, an original or the, not really the original, but the, you know, the regular ones, 
and you have some silver glitter on them, it's gonna kind of do the same thing. As far as bending them, nothing different. Not a thing different. It's it's still the same lure. It just has that little a little flashy stuff in it. You know, you make something bright and shiny, call it custom, and it's selling. This is a custom YouTube channel. This is a custom YouTube channel. You sell it. All right, Paul Melanson. I know how to say this. My brother-in-law's name is Melanson. It's Melanson, I'm sorry, but we say Melanson. We actually say Lankin. His name's Lankin. Paul Melanson. Captain Caleb, found your channel based on the Bite Me podcast. Love the content. Watch your quirky segment and saw real twitch, real technique. Saw the real twitch, real technique. Question, what real speed do you prefer? 6, 4 to 1, 7, 1 to 1, etc. Thanks in advance. Paul, hey, if you're listening to Bite Me, you're in the right place. That's a that's an awesome show. That's where I, that's kind of where I got my start in the, the media world. Um, I throw a 7, 3 to 1 almost all the time. I'd, I've had 6, 4 to 1s. They, they did good for me. The, there's no real big reason that I'm throwing that 7, 3 to 1, except that whenever I order them, that's just the easiest ones to get. Uh, I'll just, you know, reel it and work it a little bit slower. It's always been my opinion that if you're throwing a reel that's a little bit higher geared than what you're wanting, you can slow it down. But if you're throwing a lower geared one, it's a lot of work to speed it up. That's why whenever I'm sight casting redfish, I've always said if I could find a a reel that fit all my other needs and was like an 8.3 to 1, that I would be very excited because if I missed that fish, I could zip it back and send it right back at them. I would rather throw something a little bit fast than a little bit slow is my point on that. All right, Captain Timmy. Captain Tim, Captain Timmy. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Caleb, great video. Just curious in your opinion on how much does the moon phase play into your planning? Quite a bit, quite a bit, it really does. I'm gonna be out there fishing all day, but I'm, I'm gonna have ideas of whenever I think that I need to be in the good spot. I live in Austin, grew up in Corpus, so fished the lower laguna all my life. Seem to be catching less fish the more I try to plan. It, it's getting a little bit harder to catch fish in, in some bays. We, call it, well, we all kind of have our cycles, you know, right right now, you know, one bay can be totally awesome, another bay be a little bit slow, and it seems to cycle around. That being said, I have never gotten my head around why, how the moon affects the bite. Other than every so often after a full moon, I seem to get a monster early bite and almost always after the full moon has passed, the early bite is just not as good. I remember responding to this, and I told him you answered your own question, but I did tell him we would do this in a show, so here we are. That, and man, I'm really struggling to find quality fish in the numbers I used to see. Captain, I've, I've noticed that the, the patterns are different. I've, I've really had to change up and, and do different things over the last couple of years to you know, continue to see what I used to see years ago. But the moon, let's talk about it real quick. You said after a full moon that you seem to get a monster early bite, and then whenever that full moon's gone, it's not quite as strong. There's your answer. Whenever the moon is full, you usually get a strong early, early bite. Then you'll get one somewhere midday. It can be 11, 12, 1, 2 o'clock, somewhere in there. You usually get another good bite window, and then right before dark. That is just the, that's the nature of the full moon. It, they, they, they eat and they hunt at night and you know, they have their little ons and offs. So if I'm planning my day and you know, I see something else regarding the tide or you know, something else that's, that's saying, hey, I think there's gonna be some fish here. If there's a full moon, I'm gonna be there early in the morning or I'm gonna be there somewhere around midday or I'm gonna be there late in the evening. Um, like I said, throughout the rest of the day, I'm still fishing. I don't get to tell my customers, hey, let's go home for a while and come back. I'm still fishing, but I'm really keen on where I really think I need to be at those times. Um, on a new moon, they have a little bit more tendency to the, the, the bites kind of spread through the day. So that's the answer to your question. You're, and, and you're dead on. I mean, you nailed it. You've obviously been paying attention and know what you're talking about. And then this one leads right back into it. Bryce Kane. Is major necessarily better than minor, or is it just referencing the moon overhead, underfoot, rise, and set? Yes, a minor is the moon rising or the moon setting. A major is overhead or underfoot. So over your head or completely on the other side of the world from you. I don't really feel like one is better than the other. We will notice at certain, you know, certain times when Captain Pat and I are talking or Captain Nick and we'll say, hey, you know, right now the minor is really good. But next week one of us might say, hey, the major is really good. 
So I, just because it's called the Major and sounds bigger, I, I, I don't really feel like the Major's any better. Um, Colby Bosch sent me some pictures of some big fish and told me that he caught them right at the end of a minor because a while back I said that for big fish, I prefer before or after the majors or minors. And that's very true. And that's when Colby said he caught his fish. I will be showing you pictures of those on social media. Follow Captain Caleb TV. You will see them. All right. And finally, fished a quirky today for the first time. Great bait. One question. I noticed after a while. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Johnny Young. Hey, Johnny. I noticed after a while it spins through the water. What do you do to stop this? I put the nose and the tail down, like you suggested, but again, when the lure was close to the boat, it just, it, I was just fast retrieving, and again, it just spin and spin and spin, please help. All right, Johnny, um, if, <clears throat> if you bend it and you throw it out there and you can't feel it spinning, then I think you have it bent correctly. Sometimes if you bend the tail down too much, it will, it will make it spin. If the lure is not perfectly straight, it'll make it spin. Everything kind of has to be in proportion. So maybe maybe take a little bit of that bend out of each of them, you know, see how that works. But whenever that lure is close to you and you fast retrieve it, it spins almost all the time. It spins for me. Whenever I get it close and, and zip it in, that thing spins. That's just part of it. You're, there's nothing wrong. That's why I said I don't like testing lures in the swimming pool. They do different things when they're closer to you than when they're further away. So Johnny, hopefully that answers your question. So there we are. Quirkies, fat boys, waiting, cold winter, Merry Christmas, ho, ho, ho to you. If you like the video, like it, new around here, subscribe. We will catch you on the next one.